Right, so let's just go to a wee quick video uh, detailing the new stuff. So I can't remember exactly what I spoke about in the previous video, but I think it was the jump list and stuff like that I added in that video. Um, this time I have added favourites, so now you have a favourites menu on the home screen. Uh, it will update the counter and stuff like that, so when you add ROMs to your favourites list, the counter will update. When you add Xbox games, it will update, etc, etc. So to add favourites, you press the white button, you pick add current ROM to favourites. It will then add the highlighted ROM to your favourites. With Xbox games, it's the exact same process as where XBMC has always been. You press the white button to bring the context menu up and you press A on add to favourites. And that's it. You only get the wee fancy notification with the this is called the ROMs. Um, I could add it to the Xbox games but it's, it's redundant, it's pointless. You know you're adding it because you're pressing the white button on it but I might add it. But anyway, there you go. You get two games added to your favourites. You can remove them. You can press A to launch them. It will then load into the specific emulator. Um, the other changes are mainly just back end changes. More edits to the XBMC source, more changes in the scripts, updated scripts, etc. etc. Um, basically this updates a back-end change. Oh, no it's not actually. I've redone, uh, updated all the textures. They're s slightly smaller uh, to fit the menu properly. Um, you won't really notice anything. They'll probably look the same, but the dimensions are now correct for the menu dimensions. Uh, removed old textures that aren't used anymore to reduce the texture size. Uh, added some new textures. Uh, new emulator by default, so you now have the PC Engine CD ROM or PC Engine CD emulator included. Um, I think that emulator works with PC Engine as well, but I've not tried. So, by the time this is out, you might have both. Uh, what else? It uh, parses N64 ROMs properly, so you get all the synopsis, the thumbnails, etc. As long as your ROMs ma ROM names match the names in the serial.ini file, which if you download a ROM pack from somewhere, generally they do, then it will parse them all properly and you'll get the proper images and stuff like that. Uh, jumping when in the final burn alpha list now works properly. The reason it didn't work previously was because the way I got the names. The names I got based off of the zip files, which a zip can start with E, but its internal name starts with an X. You're a, one of those things. So there's now new ROM name files that fixes all that. So when you scan it in, it'll all fix them properly and stuff like that. And you'll get uh, images are based on the ROM's names. So the whatever the zip file name is, but you can download marquee packs and they'll work. You just put them in the main folder inside the TBNs folder. Uh, your FBA and main ROMs now go in the ROMs folder. They no longer go inside the emulator folder. Uh, so when you scan them in, I update, I patch, or I edit the config files for the main O extras and the Final Burn Legends emulator so that they point to the correct location so that you can just launch them it basically keeps consistency the only system uh, currently, uh, mainly because I haven't looked is the Atari Jaguar um, it doesn't support launching from XBMC so you have to, it's a direct launch emulator but I don't know if it's got a config where I can edit the paths, if I can then everything will be inside the ROMs folder, if not it will still be for Atari Jaguar. The ROMs go in its ROMs folder inside its emulator's directory. Uh, screensaver button on the home menu. Press the back button, load the screensaver. Press X for random select, so it will randomly pick a system. So if you've got a crap ton of systems to choose from, just press the X button. And it will cycle through the list and pick a random one for you. 
Um, if you play music, the random button is disabled, it then, bec then becomes the media controls. So when you're playing music, you don't get random select. Uh, when you stop the music playback, the random comes back and you can press X and pick a random system. Uh, yeah, can't think what else. Um, layouts have been updated, uh, home layouts have been updated, removed some of the code that wasn't needed, uh, fixed some of the code that was in it. God, what else? I can't even think. I've got a change log, um, a whole load of stuff in it. Um, I should have looked at that before I done this video, but as a whole, the the main feature is favourites. So now you can just add games to your favourites, and you don't need to cycle through fourteen hundred and eighty games. Yeah, you, know, you can just add to your favourite ones to your favourites list and play them. Um, what I might do? Uh, I don't know. Well, currently it's just going to be as so I'm not going to do anything more to the favourites. The favourites is done, uh, but at a later date I might add, um, like at the end of the, uh, so that you know which system's what. So if you add favourites it'll have the system initials, for instance, next to the ROM name. That way you know it's SNES, Mega Drive, whatever, etc, etc, etc instead of just a big list of games, but generally your favourite games, you would know what they were, because you added them. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's it. That's a quick video, just back-end changes, favourites, um, new toast notifications, uh, optimization of scripts, source edits to XBMC again, texture updates, and overall stability. Um, it doesn't crash anymore, I haven't had a crash. Generally the crash when I was playing videos, but you know, I've not had that in a long time, so maybe there's f the memory footprint's slightly less because I've removed textures and fixed textures. So, we'll see. Anyway, this isn't out yet, so when it is out, uh, it'll be on my GitHub, like usual. So. And I might do another video after. I was going to do one on how to install stuff, but if somebody wants to do one for me, that'd be better because I have no way of capturing my screen and my PC at the same time. So it becomes a pain in the backside because I'm having to use my phone to capture the screen, not the telly. And I don't want to have to use my phone on the PC because it looks crap. So if somebody's out there's got capture equipment, um, and knows how to do this, would like to make a video, that would be great. And thank you if somebody does. So anyway, right, bye-bye.